Hey everybody, this is Corn Smith from TechTyro.com, and today I'll be covering a introduction tutorial on Adobe's Photoshop CS6. Uh, you can get this software from our software links at TechTyro.com, as well as Adobe's website, uh, as it is their software. And we also provide um, Photoshop shortcut uh, PDFs. Uh, I recommend downloading those, as you will like to refer to them as you are working through Photoshop. Um, so let's get started into this tutorial. We'll start off with our menu bar up top here. Um, starting with File. This is where you open new projects. Um, you can open previous projects as well. Uh, close what you're working on as well as save your project you're working on. Um, next up in Edit. Um, we have Undo and Redo. Cut, copy, and paste. Fill and stroke. Uh, you can access fill and stroke through the toolbar as well. Uh, they're not called fill and stroke there, but there are tools for it. Uh, we also have puppet warp, free transform, transform. Uh, the important one here is free transform. Make sure you learn how to press Control T with your images, as you'll find it very handy. Uh, free transform allows you to just rotate the image, scale it down, proportionally scale it, uh, just with the touch of a couple buttons, uh, rather than going through menus and other things. So it's very useful to learn. Uh, make sure you do learn it. Uh, next up, we go into image. Um, in mode here, I don't have. It won't drop down right now, but under there you can change. Uh, your colors to CMYK, RGB, you can change it to grayscale, uh, as well as changing your images to 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit. Uh, it also has its adjustments uh, panel. Um, you can uh, access those over here as well. Uh, we'll cover those in another tutorial. Um, under image, you can also change image size, canvas size, and the rotation of your canvas. Uh, next up in layer, you can access all this stuff in the menu bar. Um, layer you can also access over in the panel. Uh, basically you can just add new layers, duplicate them, delete them. Uh, you can do a bunch of stuff. You'll discover that as you work through it. Uh, we'll work through it in other tutorials as well, so I'm not going to go into great detail here. Uh, just going to show you that it's there. Um, in select, I uh, go through a selections tool or a selectors tutorial later on so you'll learn about this there but it just allows you to deselect, reselect, inverse your selections and select all. Uh, those are the important ones there. I'll uh, kind of show you an example of it when we show the marquee tool later on but you'll get the full effect of it during our selections tutorial. Uh, next up we have filter. Uh, under filter we have different ones like blur, distort, uh, stuff like that. Uh, we also have a filter gallery. Under the filter gallery you can access different kind of drawing styles. There's um, watercolors, stuff like that. Um, I suggest taking a look through it as there's some cool stuff. You can kind of get a charcoal look to it. Uh, there's some cool stuff in there so just kind of play around with it. Um, next up you have view. Uh, I'll show you the important there. Um, I'll kind of show you how to open a new document too. So when you open one up, uh, you get the name. You can change the name to, uh, we'll say tutorial. Uh, oh, one. Um, you can change the presets of it to different sizes. So you can have your regular letter size. Uh, we're just going to do a custom one for now. Um, you can change the units to pixels, inches, millimeters, centimeters, depending on where you're from. Uh, I work in centimeters or pixels. Uh, you can change the width and the height. We'll just keep it at 2,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels for now, but you can change it. Uh, as I said earlier, with the color mode, you can change what you're working in, as well as the bits. And yeah, so let's hit OK and we open up our new canvas. And back to view, uh, you'll have your rulers up here. We can turn them off or back on. Um, 
I was just just leaving them on if you have the screen space. They're not. They're a pretty good thing to have there. Um, next up, I'll show you got show you guides. Um, you can set new guides here, but I'll show you the easier way to do it. Uh, if you want your horizontal guides, just click and drag this top one down. If you want your vertical ones, click and drag them over here. Uh, what you'll use guides for are basically layouts um, for websites, posters, stuff like that. Uh, it's really good to use them to just get a general idea of what you're going to be placing where and stuff like that. Uh, as well as using it for reference when you're trying to get them in their spots. Um, you can lock your guides so you can't move them further. As well as clear them through view. Uh, so we'll just clear them for now. And basically that's all you'll need to know through view. Uh, under window it allows for customization. So to show you basically you can turn tools off and that gets rid of your tools bar. Uh, you can turn it back on, they'll be there. Uh, so it just kind of shows you how customizable Photoshop really is. And it allows you to get a workspace that you really work well with. Uh, so play around with that, find what works for you and keep working with it. Um, so next we'll get into our toolbar. So we'll start off with the move tool. Uh, what this does is allows us to move images, uh, drawings, whatever you'll be working with. Um, yeah, just make sure you know how to use it as it proves to be very useful once you start getting into image editing. Um, you'll see the use very fast. Um, next up, we have our marquee tool. Uh, as I said earlier, we will cover these selection tools in another tutorial, but I will give a brief overview of how they work here. So basically, you'll draw your marquee tool selection area there. Um, what happens with your selection tool is this area becomes workable in. So you can color in here, place your images in there, but you can only work in here, as you'll notice. You can't work on the outside. Um, you can inverse this through the select area, clicking inverse. Uh, this just makes this area not workable in, but rather the rest of it is selected and you can work on the outside. And you can just deselect through here as well. Um, that's pretty much your selectors and all you'll need to know in this tutorial. Uh, if you want to know more, make sure to watch our selectors uh, tutorial. Um, next up, we will cover our color picker. So let's say I'm coloring in red over here and I want to go back to yellow. I will kick, click the color picker and I'll click there and you'll notice above the tool uh, that you'll find the color you're wanting, that yellow, and then your brush becomes that yellow and you'll be able to color with it again. Uh, so it's very handy when you're trying to get that exact color again um, yeah, so just make sure you know how to use that, uh, especially when you come to drawing. Uh, next up, we have our paintbrush tool. Um, yeah, it's, if you're drawing, it is by far one of the most important tools that you'll ever use in Photoshop. Um, most of the artists that use it will say it is their best friend. Um, Photoshop comes with a lot of preset brushes. Uh, but there is a lot of customization that goes along with it. So we will hopefully cover that in another tutorial soon. Um, but yeah, just play around with what you can find. Um, have some fun with it. Uh, so you can just color around and do some fun stuff with it. Uh, next up is Eraser. And just as it sounds, it erases. Uh, so we'll erase what we have here. All right, and next we will cover our paint bucket tool. Um, to show an example of this, I'll just set a marquee here. And since it is a drop filler, just click in there and it will fill in the area. Um, this is really good for when you want to change your canvas color that you're working on. Say I want to make it red. I'll deselect what I have here and just click and our canvas is now red. So it's good for when you're trying to set up your canvases for different things. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all there is to that. Um, next we have the gradient tool. 
Um, you just click and drag where you want the gradient to go. So you can have it horizontal, vertical, diagonal. Um, just do it horizontal for now, and that just kind of shows how to do that. Uh, you can edit that further through uh, the gradient panel. Uh, next up, we have the pen tool. Uh, the pen tool really shines in Illustrator. So if you really take a liking to the pen tool, I suggest switching to Illustrator as you'll get more out of it there. But it still serves a purpose in Photoshop, so we'll still cover it. Um, so basically it's just the same as Illustrator. You have your handles, your object, and you can make these cool lines and stuff with it. Um, what makes it different than Illustrator is Photoshop is a raster program where Illustrator is vector. So with Illustrator it's better for resizing and stuff. Um, they have smooth lines and not pixelated lines like Photoshop. But they still serve their purpose in both programs. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much all you need to know for the pen tool. If you want to know more information go watch our Illustrator tutorial and it's that's where you get the most information for it. Uh, next we have the text one. Um, just change the size here. And say you want to type out Tech Tyro. And just hit the Move tool, move it around. So yeah, the text tool is just as you would expect. It's for fonts. Uh, you can change the size of it, what font you want, uh, color, change whether it's bold, italicized, all that fun stuff there. Um, next we have the direct select. Uh, just like Illustrator, uh, it's used mostly for your vector images. Uh, you can change where your handle is, so you can change the shape of it. Uh, you can select individual points to move those around. Um, whereas your just selection tool just moves stuff around. Uh, the whole thing, not just the points. Um, next up, we will cover the line tool. Um, basically it's just used to draw lines and stuff. It's not working for me right now, but it should work for you. Um, so yeah, it's just used to draw straight lines. You can do that with the pen tool. Just easy though, clicking two points and straighten it out. Um, so those. And next up we will cover the hand tool. Actually first before that we'll cover the zoom tool. So I'll click in the zoom. You can also click the minus button to zoom out. A uh, shortcut for that is just pressing Alt and using your scrolling wheel. Um, next up we will cover the hand. So let's say I was coloring here and I wanted to move over to the right. Uh, we click the hand tool and we can click over and move over on the canvas and get back to drawing up here. A uh, shortcut for that is just holding space, and that just allows you to click and move over. Um, other really short quick tips is if you want to zoom back out to 100%, uh, double click the zoom. And if you want to center your canvas, double click the hand. And that pretty much just gets everything in the center of your screen and lets you see the whole thing. Uh, so that's the toolbar for what I'm going to cover in this tutorial. Uh, next up, I will show you the options bar. Uh, this changes for different tools that you'll be using. So, uh, for example, the brush. You can change the brush size, uh, which brush you're using, uh, what style of brush you're using. Um, change the mode you're coloring with, the opacity, flow. So basically, there's a lot of customization up in the options panel. Um, as you saw earlier, text has a lot of options up there as well. Uh, quick Select does. I'll show you Quick Select in another tutorial. But just so you know, it's there for customization. So, yeah, just options lets you really enhance your tool to succeed what you need to succeed with. Um, next up, I will just briefly show you the panels over here. Uh, this is default Photoshop. Uh, when you open it up right out of the box. Uh, I like working with it this way. People customize it all the time. That's great. Uh, I'm just going to show you what it is here, but I'm not going to go into too much detail. 
Um, basically at the top here we have our color. Uh, this allows you to change the color of brushes, text, all that stuff. Uh, you can do it right from here with your RGB, you can adjust it there. Uh, along with that you have your swatches, so you can just quickly select colors and stuff. Next up we have our adjustments panel. Uh, you can access that under image and adjustments as well. Um, I won't be covering that in this tutorial, but they will be covered throughout various tutorials coming up. So make sure if you want to learn how to use these to watch those. Um, we have our layers panel, uh, just like the layer up here. You can do all that stuff down here. Uh, some of the stuff you might have to right click like for merging and stuff like that. But you can access everything here that you could up in the layer bar. Um, that's pretty much all you need to know for the basic layout of Adobe Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed what you watched. Um, check out the other tutorials at techtyro.com. Uh, make sure to play around with Photoshop and have some fun with it. Um, from Tech Tyro, I'd like to thank you for watching this. And this is Corin Smith, and we'll see you later.